Hi, I'm Mort Cooper, your host on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. Subtitle today, The Botox Voice. In studio with us is Mary O'Donnell. She comes from where? <clears throat> Boston, Massachusetts. Boston, land of the bean and the god, where the levels talk with the cabots. Yes. And the cabots talk only to God. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I have the feeling in today's treatment of your condition, spasmodic dysphonia, that the physicians are well-intentioned in treating you with Botox, but they seem to be talking with God because they don't give you a choice. And that choice is when Botox is not working for you. Why don't they give you the choice of direct voice rehabilitation? It's all natural. You had nine Botox shots. Right, right. Of the nine Botox shots, how many were effective? The first one was very effective. Well, they seem to be able to work the, f the first one. Tom um, Donovan, who's been on the show, gives up the right of privacy and, and confidentiality, had 17 Botox shots, and the only one that ever worked was the first one. Then we had a gentleman by the name of Gerald, um, who was on this, bo uh, this uh, show. He had 19 Botox shots, and none ever worked. We've had patients who have had 45 Botox shots over a period, I believe, of 15 years at the Mayo. Not one ever worked, not one. We had a young man uh, who had 46 Botox, shot, Botox shots over, I believe it is seven years, and not one ever worked. We've had people who call me and tell me they've had 50 Botox shots and they have no voice to lost their career. The point is that I'm making is that I believe Botox is a shot that you might like to take because somebody's doing something to you and you don't have to work for it. That's fine. But the question I'm asking the medical profession, my colleagues and the academicians, is when Botox doesn't work for you, shouldn't they give you an alternative? And the alternative is reporting cures of spasmodic dysphonia for 35 years. Now, do the medics know about what I'm doing, yes, I sent out books to them. I sent out a DVD, two-hour DVD, to 14,300 of them, and it shows there are cures. I sent out a, a book, uh, a, a two-pager of cures, and the cures come from the Mayo Clinic, from UCLA Medical Center, 15 cures alone there. I used to be on the staff and faculty, f from Scripps, and the a University of Michigan, and the litany goes on and on. So if we're to be fair with the patient, and I believe the medical profession is well-intentioned, when Botox doesn't work for SD, spasmodic dysphonia, wouldn't you want an alternative? Oh, absolutely. Do you remember this voice? I've had nine Botox shots. The first one worked successfully, the rest of them. <laughs> now that seems to be a pattern. The first one works and then others don't. And patients uh, tell me they've been uh, on the show. Nancy Samaglia has been on this show. She had nine Botox shots and not one ever worked. Others have had 12 Botox shots and it worked for one day or one week and we had a young man who came to the office, he had 10 Botox shots, and it worked for one day or one week of 10. Another gentleman has 15 Botox shots, and he had one day for one shot of a voice and a week for another shot. Now, if Botox doesn't work for you, isn't it fair that the medics give you choice of treatment? They do know of the alternative, but it's non-medical. Why would you come to see me because you can give me hope and you have led me in the right direction and it's all very common sense mm -hmm. to me. How do you know it's working? How do you know it's common sense? Because um, everything that you've written in your book, mm -hmm. um, I've been there. I understand what you're saying exactly. You've read my books. Which ones have you read? Um, the suicide, voice suicide voice, especially. Stop committing voice suicide. That's it. That was excellent. Mm -hmm. um, I identified with so much in there. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a slow process, but 
it took me a long time to lose my voice and commit suicide mm -hmm. with my voice. Voice suicide. Voice suicide, <laughs> yes. All definite right. distinction. You know, SD, spasmodic dysphonia, is said to have a high suicide rate. I believe it. It's very isolating. You, um, you, sorry. When it's you hard. When you came in, first day, I said, we're going to go to lunch as part of your treatment. Oh, I didn't want to. I wanted to go hide in my car. Did you believe me when I told you you can talk in noise and no. beat the strangled voice? No. I didn't think anybody would hear me. I didn't want to talk. You were with uh, a young man who can use his voice now. He has severe yes. spasmodic dysphonia. He has a beautiful voice. Beautiful voice. Yes. Um, he was with us at lunch. Right. He was exuberant. I want to hide. Could you talk in noise, doing what I told you to do? What did yes. I tell you to do? You told me um, to bring my voice up in pitch, which I did. Diff with difficulty, because my breathing was still incorrect. It was reversed. Yeah. But you could talk above the noise. Right, with not a lot of volume. Could you do that now? Yeah. Let me yes. hear you do it. Talk above the noise? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Talk up here. Hello. Hello. Do you feel a change in voice up to the face from the lower throat? Yes. I don't have it right yet, but yes. You could be heard easily in noise. I know that now. What I'm trying to get you to do is relax and realize there's hope. My medical colleagues guarantee that you can not recover. They They're guarantee wrong. Wrong. it's hopeless. You're wrong. Are you beginning to get that? You've yes. been with me for a week. Yes. What is the, the idea you're getting from me in regard to the way you used your voice before? Um, I was breathing wrong. Mm -hmm. That's a very bad habit for me to break. But I catch myself doing it. And um, I also was speaking in my lower throat, not up in my... I didn't have my resonance up here. It was all down here. Right. Squeezed. Can yes. you squeeze your voice? I still do. I know I do. Can you do it effortfully? And give me a, a, a one or two second. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> well, I'll do it. Uh, if you talk like that. And then you talk up here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All you're doing is, doing is changing the focus of your voice, the placement from the lower throat where all spasmodic dysphonia, strangled voices, are coming from. Right. I worked with Henry Fonda. He had strangled voice. He got out of it. He went on to do On Golden Pun. I worked with Shadow Stevens, a national entertainment guy on radio and television. He got out of it. Keith Erickson, he got out of spasmodic dysphonia. They give up the right of privacy and confidentiality. Let me tell their story. It's very interesting. I've worked with a number of people who've had SD, spasmodic dysphonia, diagnosed at the top medical centers by the top ear, nose, and throat doctors, neurologists, and they have found a cure. Now, it is said that your problem is neurological. It's a basal ganglia problem. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain. It's a dystonia. It's a neurological problem. It's a rare disease. It's a psychiatric problem. It's a gene-related problem. I'm just asking you folks, do you think I'm capable of overcoming any of those problems helping patients naturally to change the focus of their voice. I don't believe, anybody would believe, that I could do that if it were real. My position is that the medical theories have failed. They are wrong. They're on the wrong road. And I invite them to change their view and their theory of voice misuse. They're making spasmodic dysphonia into a hopeless condition. And they're telling you it's a death sentence. When you come in, what do they tell you? There's no hope, no cure. The only thing you have an option for is Botox. For life. Four That's to ten times a year. your life. Variable sums from 500 to $4,000 a shot. And it goes right. on four to ten right. times a year, each and every year. Now, here's the, the other side of the coin, which frightens me. Um, Dr. Mitchell Brin brought Botox to the field in 1984. Well-intentioned. 1991, at a at a sponsored meeting by Allegan, the maker of Botox in Irvine, 
Dr. Brin at 3 o'clock in the afternoon said before hundreds of people that he wants to withdraw Botox fearing the long-term downside effects on the body. And he also indicated that there are other drugs that could replace Botox. But recently he has been interviewed because I asked a, an editor of a major magazine in the country to check that statement. And her staff did. And Dr. Brin was kind enough to say he did make the statement, but it's dated. Dr. Brin is now on the Allegan payroll as, <laughs> as a vice president of development. Now, nobody knows the long-term downside effects on the body. Nobody. Right. I was told that. They don't know long-term effects. Mm -hmm. But this is my only option for the rest of my life. Botox. Botox. Right. Not true. Okay. My position is the doctors are well-intentioned, but they're on the wrong road. This is the voice that you had. I've had spasmodic dysphonia since 2004 and was treated at mass. Okay. And they're telling you that there's no hope for a cure. Let's take a listen to a young lady and her story. It's a brief one, but I think you might get the idea of what I'm doing and why I go to the public and why I appear on the major shows, Sally, Maury, reporting cures of spasmodic dysphonia on CNN a number of times, on the major uh, TV shows and radio shows. I've been there, and I'm up against uh, a drug company and a medical uh, community. There are 200 doctors doing Botox of 14,300. They do it four to 10 times a year. There are serious consequences at times. Dr. Burke at UCLA Medical Center chair of the head and neck division has written in 1999 and it's a lifetime annuity I find they're telling you you have to have Botox for life and it's a full employment act for the 200 they're well intentioned let's take a listen to a young lady who had four Botox shots and prayed to get off it she's on the Sally show have Jimmy James return uh, in, in a few minutes but first our next guest defied all the odds she says for 34 years she didn't have a voice and she's been working with this gentleman Dr. Cooper for about four weeks and now really can talk again uh, Sylvia, you're going to talk, but you're going to talk the way you mm. talked for 34 years. I think it's important that we hear the difference. What happened? You were 18, and what happened? Well, I was 18 years old, and uh, I had a tonsillectomy. And after the tonsillectomy, uh, my voice got worse. I got a virus, and I got sicker and sicker. And by the time I got rid of the virus, I didn't have much of a voice. It would come and go. Sometimes it would almost be normal. But most of the time, it was never normal. Doctor, what is that called? It's called the strangled voice spasmodic dysphonia. And, and what causes it? They're talking in the lower throat. My take on it is that <clears throat> it's misuse and abuse. The medical community is saying it's an unknown cause, and they look to medical or neurological cause, and I'm reporting cures of this condition for over 25 years. <clears throat> okay. By direct she... voice rehabilitation. It's a different approach. She's such a beautiful woman, and mm. she sounds like a very old woman. Yeah, when I spoke spoke with her by phone when she called. You thought you were going to talk to somebody who's what? 120. 120. <laughs> that yeah. must be very embarrassing. I would think so. How did you find the doctor? Well, I went through 34 years of searching. Uh, I tried absolutely everything. I went to every doctor in It's like I'm talking to a different person. <laughs> you are? Oh, yeah. You are. Oh, that's so scary. <laughs> So you tried everything. I'm uh -huh. sorry. And as a uh, last resort, I had tried botulism four times. And after I had the Botox treatments, my voice got worse. Uh, it got so bad that I was only able to whisper. Uh huh. And I thought, what else? I have no <laughs> recourse. And they wanted me to come back for additional Botox injections to adjust the dosage but they'd already adjusted it three times. 
and it just got worse. So I decided to go with the Maverick over here, Dr. Cooper, <laughs> and I thought, what else do I have to lose? 34 years, and I had nothing to lose. She uh, is so pretty that she was in beauty pageants, but you didn't, you didn't have to speak very much, did you? Oh, yeah, I just walked on stage, and they said, hey, she looks good. And that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Let me add something, Sally. Sure. Dr. Martin Cooper is the author of Stop Committing Voice Suicide and Change Your Voice, Change Your Life, and he says he can change anyone's voice. What do you want to ask him? Oh, I don't want to ask him anything. I'm just saying that uh, after four weeks, I I'm, my personality is back. I had become withdrawn, reclusive. I had gone to psychiatrists, acupuncturists, every kind of doctor you could think of. And all of a sudden, when I got my voice back, it's like, hey, the old girl's back. Look out. <laughs> The most common voice problem is a tired voice, a misused voice, it fatigues. But she had no voice. I told her when she called me that I believe I can help her come in. And she tried everything. Her speech therapist wasn't able to help her. She heard me at a medical conference, and she referred her in. How long did it take me to find your real voice? Well, it took uh, my real voice he picked up about... Oh, five seconds. Uh, <laughs> really? I have somebody God. for you. Can you... Uh, some, we have somebody who would like to change her life. Her name is Kelly. Do you mm -hmm. think you could help her? If Kelly wants to change, I believe I can help almost everyone. Ah, okay. The individual has to want to change if they find that the voice is rewarding for them. And we're back in studio. As we were watching this, what was your comment before? Oh, um, um, wait a minute, um, I prayed that I would never have to have a Botox shot again, but, um, because they frightened me so much to have to have them, they scared me when you have a needle into your throat mm -hmm. and they don't know the right dosage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you don't know if it's going to work. I prayed that I would never have to have one again, and I'd rather live with a no voice than have to have another well, one. Well, Sylvia, that we just saw, didn't want any more Botox. She had four. She prayed that she would get her strangled voice back rather than have to endure a more Botox. My, my whole uh, position is very simple. When Botox is not working for the individual, you had nine Botox shots. How many do you feel were effective for you? Probably one was effective, maybe two. Okay, two of, of nine. And you didn't want any more? No, I, before I even heard of you, I made a conscious decision. I'm not doing this again. It's, mm. It was no happiness in my life. Did they ever give you an alternative? Did they tell you that Dr. Mort Cooper reports cures? We they know. never mentioned you, never. I send them information. I have ongoing cures. I have cures from the top medical centers, from the top ear, nose, and throat doctors, and neurologists, and I've been doing this for 35 years. They know I exist. Now, my position is very simple. If something doesn't work, wouldn't a physician for himself and his family like to have choice? And if somebody tells them there's no hope, get a second opinion, a third opinion? When they tell you you have spasmodic dysphonia, it's a death sentence. They're guaranteeing that there is no hope. Now, I'm sorry to call them Dr. Doom, Doom, and Doom Incorporated, but that's what they're doing. And I see, I see those in the medical profession who know better, who are aware of what I'm doing. One of the top ear, nose, and throat doctors on the faculty at UCLA Head and Neck Division his wife was diagnosed with spasmodic dysphonia. He had the option of free surgery. At that time, it was surgery, free. He elected to send his wife to me. She was cured of her SD, and he gave me a testimonial. But the issue is not only that I have cures of spasmodic dysphonia. That's one point. The issue is, do patients know? Are they aware they have choice? And the answer is, did they tell you there's choice? No. I had no hope. No hope. 
No cure, just Botox. The medical profession guarantees there are no cures, guarantees it. My field, the American Speech Hearing Language Association, guarantees there are no cures, yet I run ads in the American Speech and Hearing Association that there are cures. I have peer review cures in 1980 in a prestigious international journal. But the American Speech Language Hearing Association insists officially there are no cures. They're in part tied to the National Spasmodic Dysphonic Association, funded by Allegan, the maker of Botox. Both of these organizations guarantee there are no cures. The medical profession guarantees there are no cures. They give you no hope. I'm the only one out there. Speech therapy has failed, incidentally. There are no cures reported by speech therapists in the American Speech Language Hearing Association, and they prohibit me from publishing in those journals. So I run ads. Now the book that I have out is free to you. It's called Curing Hopeless Voices, The Strangled Voice, parenthesis, spasmodic dysphonia, and the subtitle is an alternative to Botox. There is no alternative to bo Botox for spasmodic dysphonia. If it works for you, that's great. If it doesn't work for you, why don't the physicians and the academicians provide choice of treatment? That's what I'm after. They never gave you choice. They don't. How did you find me? Um, my sister-in-law hmm. happened to be out to dinner. She sat down to a man, next to a man who had spasmodic dysphonia. Mm -hmm. And um, he was looking into a Dr. Morton Cooper mm -hmm. and he had read about Scott Adams. And she passed the information on to me. Who's Scott Adams? He, he's a cartoonist who uh, creates Dilbert mm -hmm. every week. Do you know what you know what Scott Adams said about me? Yeah. It's a seven page blog, it's free, you can get it on my website. It will be shown at the end of the show. He said it's a life uh, change for him. Right. Right. And he's very positive. Uh, he had five Botox shots. Two worked, he said. Uh, two didn't. Uh, the fifth was iffy. Uh, he didn't want uh, Botox for life, for the rest of his life. And his voice was uh, not certain he needs his voice. So I helped him. Right. How much help do you think you're getting from me? Um, um, major <laughs> help. Major help? <laughs> yes. You know exactly I, you what know you're what? doing. I'm, I'm going to maybe have some solution. Yes. Yes. Why do you feel you're having some solutions with me? Because I guess You had speech therapy. For five months. Yeah. You're here for a week. Why do you feel you're getting help with me and not with the speech therapist. Because you, you found my voice. First of all, you've had 35 years of experience. Mm -hmm. You Reporting hear, cures. Right. Reporting cures. And then um, um, you hear, mm -hmm. you hear right away what is what, what's going on, my voice. And within minutes of meeting you, you found my natural voice. No, my feel says that's impossible. I can't do that. Well, you did. I know. You right. just saw Sylvia. It took me right. five seconds. Yes. Your breathing is reversed. It's still not right. Yes, but it's reversed. We, I told you that. Right. The medical profession is saying that the reason it's reversed is because you have a dystonia. You cannot change that symptom. It's a symptom of a dystonia and a, a neurological problem. I don't I, believe that. I'm changing it. Yes, I know that. I'm doing it. So they're wrong then by what they're saying. Right. Now, my concern is, does the patient understand they're making what is natural abnormal by reversing the breathing, by talking in the lower throat down here instead of talking up in the face? Can you say, mm-hmm? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Now, can you jiggle it up there? Mm -hmm. Could you do that when you first mm -hmm. came in? No. No? No, I can do it now, though. Do you hear your voice coming out? Yes. I've had nine Botox shots. The first one worked successfully, the rest of them. Okay. Do you hear the difference in the voice? Yes. Do you feel more comfortable with what I'm telling you, that there's hope? Yes. Does um, it relax you when you know there's hope? Yes. They Makes told me happy. Yes. They told you there is no hope. Right. They guaranteed it. Do you think, do you believe, folks, that the physician guaranteeing something 
to their own family saying if they had SD that there is no hope that would make their family happy? Would the physician want to do that? I'm just asking, why do they tell the patients there's no hope when I'm reporting cures for 35 years? I don't guarantee anything. I simply report cures, ongoing cures, recoveries, and voice improvements. Because the problem that you have, Mary O'Donnell, is not caused by a neurological problem. It's not ca caused by a basal ganglia. It's, it's not caused by a chemical imbalance, not caused by a gene problem. It's not a rare disease. It's not a psychiatric problem. It will become one if you don't get your voice back. Because you talk like that. And that, that's awful. People's eyes are popping out. Their necks are spasming. Their body is spasming. That's coming from the misuse of voice. Now, I'm just going to make this point. If you have a cramped leg, do you believe that the physician should Botox the leg? No. I no. Like, no. No. Do you believe they should do surgery on the leg? Or Graham? No. Right. No. All you have to do is stretch the heel of your leg forward and the cramp will disappear. I'm saying stretch the voice, get it out of the lower throat and put it up in the mask. Change the pitch. Change the pitch. Hum your way to a better voice and get the breathing right. And you don't have to have Botox, possibly. If Botox is working for you, fine. If it's not working, there's an alternative. Do you like the alternative yes. I'm giving you? Yes. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much improvement have you made in one week? Oh, maybe 4. 4? I made a big improvement in the beginning, mm -hmm. and now it's gradual. Right. Do you yeah. hear your voice coming out? Yes. At times I do, yes. I know. You have to work for consistency. Right. I'm Ward Cooper. The title of the program is called Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. When you do that, you certainly do change your life, as Scott Adams says, uh, he's the cartoonist for Dobert. Thank you for joining with me. The Botox Voice. Is it working for you? Bye-bye.